Welcome to the Loopy Pro video manual. This is a series of videos getting you up and running with Loopy Pro as fast as possible. If you haven't watched the other videos, I'm gonna put a playlist up so you can go back and watch it right from episode one. This episode is all about the mixer and colors. The mixer inside Loopy Pro is amazing and it grows with you. And when you incorporate that with the color system that's in Loopy Pro, I believe that this thing is one of the biggest ways you can incorporate all your sounds and all your loops on one platform to control it all. Now I have loaded up a loop that I've created so I'm just gonna play it just to show you what's going on. So there's quite a bit going on here, and if you've heard that in your headphones, you may have heard that the stuff actually panned slightly to the left, slightly to the right, and there's a little bit of volume control as well. This is all done through the mixer, and you access the mixer at the bottom left-hand corner. So as we tap this now, this brings up the mixer window. What's really clever about this is you can use it while it's live and you can also expand it as you go. Just like any analog or digital mixer, it has a couple of options. And you can see, first of all, my voice bouncing up and down on input number one. Then you've got a little bit of a gap and then we've got five channels which are all to do with colors. These are the loops. And then the final one is the master. Each channel has its own volume control, its own sends, its destinations, effects, the balance left and right, a mute and a solo. So let's start with the microphone. I've got the microphone plugged in on channel one on my audio interface and I can see that here This audio interface has a lot of ins and a lot of outs But if you've got an audio interface that's just two in two out then you'll just see two and two But you can see here we can go up to 20 and you can either have them as single ones or stereo and you can pair them up really quickly so if you've got a keyboard, you're plugging in a left and a right, then you can just go channel one and two, or channel five and six, whichever one you want, because of course that audio interface is telling Loopy Pro it's got that many inputs. At the top here, it just says hardware input. Of course, you can rename it if you want to, and monitoring is on, which means that you can actually hear the audio output back to you. There's also a monitor through, and this is really handy if you wanna hear something for a drummer and you wanna send them a click track, or they only wanna hear certain elements of all the loops. The monitor channel you can either send to the speakers or you can send to a specific color. And we'll get into colors in a second. If you've seen episode two, we talked about gestures. And one of the gestures was kind of curving your finger around the loop to actually access the volume. Well, the other thing you can do is tap the little loop on the left hand side. And what this will do is it'll spin round. And now what you've got is you've got control of two things. One, the volume of that loop. So the output of that loop and also the pan. So we can move this around. I can just drag it really, really quickly. So I can drag it down and I can drag it across. And if you wanted to reset it, you just double tap and it'll put it all back to zero and center. Tap the little loop again and it goes back to the loops. So input number one, you can see I've actually got an effect on here and this effect is an effect which is made by TC Helicon. It's a AUV3 plugin and we'll get into those in the next video. I've turned it off for now because I already used it for recording the loops. You have pre-fader effects and post-fader effects. Again, I'll get into those later. But to add an effect, it is just a case of tapping it. And if you've got any AUV3 plugins, you can add them in here. You're not just limited to two, so it does give you an option for two but if I just added another one now like a reverb it will then give me the option for third fourth however many you need underneath that you've got destinations and this is where the audio is going to so first of all I want my microphone to go to all the loops and that's what the colors are for if you have more colors then of course we'll have more destinations but I can dictate actually I want the microphone to only go to the orange color and then I want a guitar to go only to the blue color and you can do this really really easily additional to that we've got audio outputs as well so we can see here it's actually going to audio output one and two. It's a real clear and simple way to organize your outputs and then organize your inputs. Just like an analog or digital mixer, you've also got sends and you can actually create a new buzz send. So if we do that now, 
we then can send this to something else. So instead of having the effect that I've got here at the top, I could send it over to the buzz and the buzz could have the effect on it. If you've got an iPhone or an iPad that is struggling or doesn't have the latest chip inside and you can see the percentage on the right hand side here going up and up and up, this is a really great way to free that up. Instead of having four holes all on different inputs or on different loops, you could use it to send it to the sends and adjust that accordingly. So you end up with just one hole. Then additional to that, you've actually got the volume. And with Loopy Pro, Michael's done something really, really clever with the design. When you've got a fader or any kind of control knob, you can actually make it a lot bigger. So right now you can see it's here as my voice bounces up and I'm just gonna move it up and down with my finger. Now it's a little bit small. So what I can do is as I hold it down, I can actually bring it out and be in much more control of what I want by making it bigger. And as soon as I get closer to it or I let go, it will stay at that position. Same with the balance. I can move it with my finger left and right but if I move up then actually I can bring it over here and very very easily move it across this is just fantastic it's a great great way of getting some real good control and I do like the fact that the center does snap into the middle you have a mute and you also have a solo and if you do a mute or a solo for the import, and we've only got one import, then that's the only thing that'll happen. Whereas if we do a mute for the loops, so we'll mute the orange loops, but when we'll solo the yellow, you can see all the others go into mute as well, which is really, really clever. And then if I go back and take a solo off, the one that I've muted will remain muted because I chose that. So it doesn't automatically just turn them all off, which is really, really great. Then you can see we've got the master channel and the master channel here does have a mute. Again, with the master channel, you can add on things like effects, both pre-fader and post-fader as well. Now, if you want to make this a really simple mixer, on the right-hand side, you'll see two arrows in a circle. If you tap that, it'll actually make it really, really nice and neat. And this takes away the effects and also the destinations. Tap those arrows again which are now pointing upwards and I'll expand it out for the full mixer. So how do we add more to the mixer? Well, what we need to do is click the plus button on the bottom right hand side. When we do this, we can add a couple of things. First of all, we can add a new color. Then we can add a new hardware input. We can add an audio unit input, an inter-app audio unit. We can add MIDI and we can add another bus. So let's add another color. Straight away, it's got a lovely animation, another fader comes up, and now we've got a purple color. Now, in order to use this, we need to change either one of these loops over to purple or add some more loops. So if we hide the mixer for a second, we can actually add another loop, and then we can go into the editor and actually change this one over to a different color. We'll be going over the editor in full in another video. The next one is a hardware input. So right now we've got microphone number one and that's coming in on channel number one. And if I add another hardware input, it'll ask me, well, we've got these available because it can read the audio interface. So I wanna add channel number two. Again, this is our second input on the audio interface and I can do exactly the same as I can for any other hardware input and I can add effects. I can say what destinations it's going to, I can say what output it's going to as well. The next one is an audio unit, AUV3 plugins, for example. So if you've got synthesizers, keyboards, drums, samplers, anything else you can think of like that, that's where this lives. So now it's bringing up all the apps that I can import. So I'm gonna import an app. I'm gonna bring in Mark one and what it's done in the background is it's just launched House Mark 1 and brought it in on its own channel. If I now tap this, it's there. It's ready to go already. And if I have a keyboard plugged in, I don't have to go to a separate app. It's already here inside Loopy Pro. Think of Loopy Pro as your digital audio workstation and you've just launched a synthesizer or a keyboard or in this instance, House Mark 1. You don't have to leave the app. It's all built in. Even from here, I can actually tap on a keyboard and we've got access to it straight away. Now the next option is inter-app audio. So imagine you have audio from another app somewhere and you want to bring that in, but you want to keep that app open. Inter-app audio is supported by Loopy Pro and you can add specific things from specific apps. For example, you can see here, I've got Loopy HD, but I can actually add just track one from Loopy HD. You can see I've got audio share and I can add a sample from audio share into Loopy Pro or one of the ports from AUM. I can bring this into Loopy Pro and have both of them running at the same time. Be aware that when you do into app audio, it does take more hardware processing power than if you're using it as an AUV3 plugin. The next one is simply add MIDI. When you do this, you have a couple of options. You can either add MIDI that's coming from a physical device, like for example, they can use it from the AudioFuse Studio, so the MIDI port, or MIDI that's coming from virtual or MIDI from an app, as you can see here. And there's quite a 
few to choose from. Now, some AUV3 plugins don't have MIDI in the traditional sense. They don't have it where you can play something. We actually could have MIDI as form of a CC number, which changes an effect. And it's just booted up FRMS, and you can see that here. And it is on its separate section because it is MIDI as opposed to the plugin itself. Now, the difference is you can see here that if you look at the MIDI option for FRMS, it hasn't got a destination. So it's asking, where are we gonna put this MIDI? So if you go into here, we can actually say, well, MIDI out, or we're gonna play that MIDI into a different app inside Leapy Pro. And the only one I've got open right now is House Mark 1. So be aware by adding MIDI, you're adding it so you can play the MIDI file of that track into something else. And the last one, as we discussed before, is adding a bus. So we can add buzzes into here and we can then add in things like effects and send that over by the loops themselves and the inputs. Now, when you come out of the mixer, you you can now see that we've got a couple of things at the bottom of the page. So I've got the audio rack that I had here and you can very quickly tap it and turn it on or off. You can see it's flashing there to turn off. I can turn FRMS off and I can also turn Housemark 1 off. And I'm turning off the individual AUV3 plugins or effects or MIDI. Now if I tap the little diagonal arrows, it'll actually bring up the app. This is great because I can actually move it and put it anywhere I want to. And you can actually change the size, but it's dependent on the app and whether it's actually got a interchangeable size app for that plugin. So this one hasn't, but I can actually have a look at this. I can turn it on, turn it off here. I can view it or not view it. So when I say not view it, I can't see it at the bottom. So maybe you've got some effects like EQ that you don't want to see, but actually are active. So you don't want to see them at the bottom here. You can say, well, I don't want to see it because it's just going to stay there the whole time. But with things like this, where I'm going to change the sound, I want to be able to access that. And that's really, really cool in a live environment because we can can just get into it real quick. I can get into House Mark 1 real quick. Let's turn it on. And if you look very carefully on the bottom there, you can see the individual colors that House Mark 1 can play to different loops. So actually it can play to all of them. So if we go back into the mixer, I can actually say, well, actually, I don't want it to be available for these three loops. It'll just only want it available for the orange, the yellow, and the green. So now you can see that House Mark 1 is only available for orange, yellow, and green based on what I've told it. To have this quick access to your AUV3 plugins whilst you're doing a live performance is fantastic. So the other thing we're gonna talk about today is colors. Now you've kind of seen already how important colors are because colors are their own channel on the mixer. So for example, I could have all of these as one color and then they would only be one channel on the mixer or I could separate them all up or I could change all 10 of these loops to different colors and they could be individually managed on the mixer. But the other thing you can do is you can do things by color. When you do anything, and I swipe up here, you can see this is the orange color. And if I tap on here, I could say, well, I want this to be purple, but I want the other one to be orange. So now as we hit play and we play all of these and bring them all in, you can now see this audio coming out of the purple fader because that we've got a purple loop. As I change this back over and you can do it live, then the purple one has actually stopped and we've gone back to our orange loop. But with colors, what you can do is you can edit by color as well. So if you go into the top right hand corner, we've got our settings here. Now we've got clip settings and we've also got color groups. So if we go into color groups, you can see the ones that we've created. Let's just pick the orange one for now and we can actually change things by color. So if you've got all your drums on orange and you've got all your basses on yellow, you can actually adjust this accordingly so then you don't have to keep doing it for every single loop that you create. This saves a lot of time and you've got a Lot of different things so we can change gestures we can actually change playback settings we can change the pitch the speed the volume the balance and we can even change how the loops behave by color as well which are follow actions that's a pretty advanced thing and we'll go into that in another video colors are the loops or the one shots that you create and you can actually have different colors for different things but they're also the destinations for the audio that's actually coming in and where they're going to for each loop there's absolutely loads of colors you can have so when you go into the editor there is actually a color window and you can just add more colors either through the mixer or here and if we keep adding you'll soon see and realize there are actually loads you can see here that i've actually added every color that you can get and there is actually 21 including the white and you've got all these different colors and there's a little gray line on the top there and that tells you which ones are actually being used if we now go over to the mixer you'll actually see 
all these different colors are available to you and then the colors start doubling up. So you can have to have two reds or three reds or three greens and you can get even more, but I don't know why you'd want that many. <laughs> the mixer with the colors grows as you add more things and you can clearly see that here. Now, if I hit play on all of this, there's only five colors that I'm using right now. But I could take the bottom five, add them as different colors, and we've got 10 that are completely independent. And I could change their balance, their volume, all independently if I wanted to. This gets pretty in depth pretty quick, but it's the kind of mixer that you want to be able to just grow with you as you add more things. However long this mixer gets, it's actually quite simple to understand. Now we'll go deeper into colors and what you can do with grouping of colors in another video, but the next video is all about effects and plugins.